Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. So, um, following the Emmy that we won for Storeboard Pro, I had done a number of uh, tips there on Storeboard Pro. But this week I'd like to change gears a little bit and go into talking about uh, particles, or starting to talk about particles. Um, I did do already a series on Highlights and Shadows, and that Highlights and Shadows series I'd recommend watching first just because it's an introduction to how to do effects. Um, also, for those of you who are doing um, highlights and shadows or effects in, in Animate, in Animate Pro, then that can give you more of a, an idea of how to do it in those um, products as well. Particles are something new, so those, that's something that's only available in Harmony. Um, so I'll start out today by doing just an introduction to particles. So let's get started. Um, now, when I always like to introduce particles, I like to just go first by looking at the particle examples. and. Um, you can get to it through the insert menu, insert particle, and then you've got all the examples right here. So I could go to weather and then fire, for example. Um, you also have a new tab down here in your module library called particle examples. And this would allow you just to drag and drop that example in. Think of the examples just as templates, right? They're just, they're, they're glorified templates of the, of the effect that you're looking at. So um, all of the particles are uh, node-based effects, just like all the other effects in Harmony. So you'll have to have your network view open to examine and take a look at these effects. Also, these effects are effects that look a little bit different in the OpenGL view from the render view. Like most of the effects, we can give um, an OpenGL preview of what the effect looks like, but if you actually hit the render button and let it render out, then it's going to show something a little bit different because it will add whatever effects can't be shown in the OpenGL view like blurs and glows and things like that. Um, let's go ahead and take a look inside. So when we look inside an effect, um, or a particle effect rather, the, there are um, a bunch of different modules in here. So when we look at, a, an, at an effect, uh, we've tried to make this a little bit easier by color coding things in here. So um, you see that these different modules have different um, colors to them. And the ones that are purple, the light purple color here, are what we like to call actions. And actions, if you can think about it, are something that's done to a system that affects the way that the system exists. Um, in other words, a particle system is kind of like an enclosed system. It's, it's, like, it's, it's uh, basically like an environment where stuff happens inside. And so all of the actions that you'll do on this particle system are things that will affect what happens to the particles inside that closed environment. So if we look at the different ones that we've got in this one, we've got the ability to move the particles. Uh, emitter, the emitter is the most important one of them all, and that's I'm going to dedicate an entire tip to this next week to what the emitter does and how to work with the emitter but the emitter is what creates the particles. And then some, some of these other ones are, are additional, like wind friction, uh, like it sounds, is going to give a bit of uh, wind to it. Velocity. Velocity affects the initial velocity at the creation of the particles. And the reason I say this is because uh, when you create the particles, when they're first born, um, each particle has this concept of life. So they start out at age 1 or age 0 or 1. And then as each frame goes by, the age increments by one. So on frame two, it's two frames old, it's three frames old on frame three, and so on. Um, so velocity only affects when that particle first enters the system. And then once it's in the system, other actions will affect it, like gravity, the wind friction. But when it's first created, it might have initial velocity. Think of it like... Um, you know, particles are, that don't have any velocity, they're kind of just like, you know, I don't know, coins that are sitting on a table. But if you think instead about a hose, a hose that has water spraying out of it, then the water is coming out of it at an initial velocity. But then after the hose comes out, maybe I should draw this just to make it easier to understand. So that's why I like having a, an animation software, because you can just draw stuff. Okay, so... All right, so here's my hose. And so as the water is starting to come out of the hose at the beginning, it has this initial velocity that drives it upwards. And that's what this module represents. 
However, after those particles start moving upwards, these are like my water droplets, they're going to start to come back down again. And the reason that they're going to come back down again is because of gravity. So gravity is another one of those actions that you can do in your particle system. So all of the different actions and, and things that, you, that can happen in your particle system exist in the particle tab of your module library. So in here, this is where you're going to find that gravity one and various other ones. Um, things like explosions. All of these things are things that can be affected to the, the particles. But basically, so um, if we think of the, the water particles coming out of this hose as a, um, an enclosed system, then you know what happens when you initially have them start is your initial velocity. So then on top of this, then um, you know on top of this you might have something like wind friction, but let's just look at this system as a whole now and think about how it's actually existing. We have particles that are created inside the emitter and within those particles you have um, you know a shape. Each particle has a shape that the particle you know looks like and the particle shape is determined by what we call a sprite. So if I take a look at my drawing view and I look at the, um, the particle here for my fire sprite, let me just see where it is. Looks like my first frame is empty. Um, so yeah, it looks like I have a few different frames on my particle sprite there. So these different frames represent the shape and the size of the particle, and there is, there's even a bit of a texture on it, so there's a bit of a blur on it. It's not a very sophisticated looking particle, actually, if you look at it, but when you hit render, because there's a certain amount of blur applied, then it gives you that look. Um, and so the, the actual particle here is the sprite. And because of the way that we do things, we actually connect together um, an actual drawing layer, like a regular drawing layer from the system into that particle engine. So that means that you could draw whatever you want to be a particle. Like I could add a smiley face in there and I could have a smiley face be a particle. And then um, you can see the smiley face showing up now in my particle example in real time. So, you know, any changes that you make to that drawing are applied in real time to your particle system. And that is super, super cool. And if you think about it, because it's a drawing layer, what other things can you do on a drawing layer? You can import images onto a drawing layer. You could um, in, even import a 3D model onto a drawing layer. So all of those things could, in fact, become a particle. So the main things to think about is you're creating a particle, and then you're affecting it with certain actions down here.